Um, why didn't anyone tell me that the Imagine Dragons guy was a smoke show? From the stage line, people clapping, I mean, he's definitely dressed like he was out jogging and then suddenly realized, uh, oh wait, I have a concert, but you know, we'll let it slide. Why are you so sweaty? Oh, uh, I started a fight club. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. I cover pop culture from a conservative perspective. Thumbs up this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Russell Brand epically roasted MSNBC. I'll break down the earth-shattering Vanderpump Rules drama, Real Housewife star Heather Dubrow's 12-year-old trans child, and for Hot Take Tuesday, I'll get into Northwest, having a play date with Ice Spice, the Victoria's Secret fashion show coming back after four years, and more. Russell Brand absolutely ripping MSNBC to shreds on Bill Maher is my favorite clip from the past week, and I had to show you this. I wonder what Katy Perry thinks of him now that he's become enemy number one of the approved narrative. John, I've not known you long, but I love you already. But I have to say that it's, <laughs> it's disingenuous to claim that the biases that are exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It's difficult to suggest that's, that's... that these corporations operate as anything other than mouthpieces for their affiliate owners in BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and unless we start to embrace, and, and also, mate, like, just spiritually, if I may use that word in your great country, we have to take responsibility for our own perspective. I, I've been on that MSNBC, yeah, mate. It was right. propagandist nutcrackery yeah. yeah, on there. You, I went on the show called Morning Joe. Yeah. It was absurd the way they carried Good on. Good morning, Joe. Yes. Yeah, it, I don't it. know what it was. It wasn't morning. There was no one called Joe there. No one could concentrate. They didn't understand the basic tenets of journalism. No one was willing to stick up for genuine American heroes uh, like Edward Snowden. No one was willing to talk about Julian Assange and what he suffered trying to bring real journalism to the American people and I think to sit within the castle of MSNBC throwing rocks oh. at Fox News is ludicrous. My friends, Make my MSNBC friend. better. My friend, my Make friend, MSNBC my friend, great my friend, again. My friend. Now watch this guy ask Russell Brand for evidence to suggest that MSNBC goes on the air and shares fake news. Single, you have a single actual no. fact. Do you want an example? Yeah, Do you yes. want an example? Yes. The ludicrous, outrageous criticisms of Joe Rogan around ivermectin, re deliberately referring to it as a horse non, medicine when they know it's an effective non medicine. Yeah, that, that's what not a Rachel example. Maddow turning up on the TV non saying, non if you take well, this vaccine, you're not going to get it, when it hadn't been clinically trialed to transition. You have to listen. Wait, Do you think you can improve response. America I by determinately be and avowedly condemning Fox News without acknowledging that you're participating in the same game? I'm, Did you not? just listen to Bernie Sanders, <laughs> someone who plainly legitimately believes in this country and believes it's possible to change, but is bound by corruption, is bound by the lobbying system. Surely it's clear to you, Bill, as one of the great pundits and experts and comic voices that systemic change is required. Money has to be taken out of politics. We need new political systems that genuinely represent ordinary Americans so that we can overcome cultural differences. And bickering about which propagandist network is the worst is not going to save a single American life, not improve the life of a single American child, not going to improve America's standing in the world, and the world needs a strong America. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. So you have an obligation, a duty, not to condemn these people. Russell Brand isn't a conservative by any means. I mean, you can tell that by his Bernie Sanders comment, but he's a critical thinker, and he isn't quick to believe many of the lies others fall for. So based on that clip, I wanted to find this video of him on The Morning Joe to see what he was talking about that was so bad. Here it is, and it is painful, like way worse than what he even described. You know, funny, the accent, you know, when I see him in person, it's totally fine. Forgetting Sarah Marshall or the TV show, it's fine. But on satellite radio in the car, I can't understand a single joke you, you say. You can't understand no. it. Can you I understand can't. me? Yes, but I'm telling you, when I'm driving in the car and he's, no. everyone's laughing in the audience of the radio, I'm like, I have no idea what he's saying. It's best you focus on your driving, Brian. <laughs> You're a man, you don't want to be distracted by humor. You might crash into right, a pedestrian. Okay. So it's a good thing. I think it's probably for the best. I I think I'm just my, this is my first, um... Brand experience? Brand, mm -hmm. yeah. 
that I think it's not listening to him. It's ex it's experience. It's just sort of taking it all in. You are talking about me as if I'm, I'm not here and as if I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> you know, I'm from a country well, that's kind of near to you. Dummy. We're just sort of admiring the whole. You know, it's the whole thing. Isn't well, it? thank you for it's your like casual objectification. It's an experience. <laughs> I'm glad it's that experience. it's positive for it's you. It's very positive, absolutely. Any more? Any other questions? Yeah, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You've become nervous. I am. Why I am are you nervous? Really? No, I'm You're awesome. a powerful woman. You've oh, got a lovely yes. job. What seems to be the trouble? <laughs> I don't know. You've got hair like Princess Diana. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've never when seen her. She was alive. She wasn't being offensive. Uh, here's a little weird. subtext. Yes. I'm petrified of her. And you oh, have her yeah. on her heels. And she's just moved down the I other end of the table. I absolutely love this. Keep, keep, keep really, keep what's going. the. Okay. What seems to be the trouble, love? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm, we're now we're going to do a bit of therapy. I'm would good. you do therapy with Willie Brandt? With who? Willie Brandt. Would you do therapy with him? Um, no. I don't. Because that's where he's heading. Okay. I'm all right. Yeah. You shouldn't say he when a person is present. You should refer to the person by their name. That's basic good manners. That is where Willie is yeah. heading. Who is Willie? I don't know. Okay, Russell Brand. Is this what you all do for a living? Russell Brand has perspective and clarity. Someone many on the left and the right could learn from. Can you get some towels for me, please? I'm really losing a lot of blood. You sound like you're from London. Sometimes a story is so big that I have to report on it, even if I, you know, normally wouldn't. The Vanderpump Rules cheating drama falls into this category, although I have to give a disclaimer, I don't watch the show. Ugh. However, I'll tell you what I found out, and even as someone who doesn't watch Bravo, I have to admit it's pretty juicy. Fans of the show are calling it their Watergate. Cast member Ariana Maddox was blindsided after she found X-rated messages on her boyfriend's phone of nine years between him and another woman on the show. Oh my God. Tom Sandoval was having an illicit affair, cue the Taylor Swift song, with co-star Raquel Levis. Tom and Ariana are in their late 30s and Raquel is 28. It's giving euphoria plot line. You're f***ing Nate, are you kidding me? Uh, no, I, <laughs> I don't even know why she would say that. The two cheaters supposedly are excited to become a couple now that Tom is single, and Bravo is allegedly talking about renewing the show for an 11th season now, since this is the type of mess that viewers live for. I'm shaking, I'm physically shaking. According to the Daily Mail, production has switched the cameras back on, and they are catching all of the fallout as the cast reacts to this news. This will be, they say, the best season of Vanderpump Rules. I can't believe President Joe Biden hasn't made a statement regarding Tom and Ariana's breakup yet. Come on, man. Moving from one Bravo show to another, Real Housewives of Orange County star Heather Dubrow has been praising her 12-year-old daughter for coming out as trans and celebrated International Sons Day with her. She announced that her daughter's new name is Ace. Now, here's where things get even more interesting. Heather has three other kids with her husband, botched plastic surgeon Terry Dubrow. They have a 16-year-old daughter, Katerina, who claims she's non-binary and bisexual. They also have 19-year-old twins, Nicholas, a son, and Maximilia, a daughter, who says that she's a lesbian. Now that seems like a lot from one family, doesn't it? You sound like a gay. <laughs> <laughs> Research published last year by the Trevor Project found that over one in four, that is 26% of LGBT LGBTQ youth identify as non-binary. An additional 20% said that they are not sure or are questioning whether they identify as non-binary. One in five Gen Zers identifies as LGBTQ. That is double what it was from just a decade ago. No social contagion elements, I'm sure. Even stranger, a whopping 57% of LGBTQ Americans identify as bisexual. Now, you think maybe that's perhaps so they can claim that they're not a dreaded straight person and get points for being different while getting away with still dating people of the opposite gender? You belong to the Mordeo now. Ready for a few more stories? Put your fireproof suit on. I take Tuesday. Victoria's Secret is bringing back their iconic fashion show after a four-year hiatus. It went away since the brand was outed to be super rapey with their Jeffrey Epstein ties and everything. Not to mention, no signs of penis persons for a lingerie brand, which just won't cut it in today's culture. 
Ten-year-old Northwest had a play date with female rapper Ice Spice for some reason. I'm pretty sure this is the kind of stuff Kanye was trying to protect his kids from. On the flip side, I was listening to Dirty by Christina Aguilera when I was nine, so I don't know if I have room to talk. I tried to pay, he begged me to stay. Babe, I'm not staying, I just wanna play. In the party, he just wanna rock. Big groups in the bus, they talk. She a baddie, she knows she a 10. She a baddie with her baddie friend. Some good news, and I think we can all agree this is because of the diligent work of Matt Walsh. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has signed a law banning minors from getting gender surgeries or attending drag shows. A win. I'm oh, sorry, if, if we did something to upset you, I, I'm sure it was in Inverden. I needed a comfort show, so I started re-watching Pen15 on Hulu. Now, I watched this when it first came out, but haven't really thought about it since until some clips started popping up on TikTok that made me want to go back and re-watch it. It is even better now that I've turned 30. The way those two girls are 34 in real life and just nailing middle school is so beyond. The acting is so good, and I just absolutely love it. It is a shame that COVID took that show away from us. It really was incredible for the millennials out there. Some of the detail and accuracy is just mind-blowing. Like, I don't even know how they remembered some of these things. Sorry, it's fresh for me since I just rewatched it, but I know it's old news. Could you please do me a favor and leave us a five-star review on the spillover? I keep forgetting to ask and we need some new ones. Thumbs up this episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. I guess if you don't do that, even with being subscribed, you won't be told a new episode is out. All the Bravo girlies, you need to fill me in on the tea of this scandal in the comments. If you watched Pen15, do you remember liking it? We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda, Monday through Thursday. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics.